Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and it is way past time for more Scuttlebutt. This week's game in the background brought to you courtesy of Tier 10, Russian Destroyer, Grozovoy. Raptor, why do you have a work in progress logo on your Grozovoy game? Well, that's because this particular Grozovoy game is being played from this past weekend's submarine testing session on the special test server. And so I don't feel it's um, fair uh, to you guys to, 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 to not display that logo, to understand that what you're seeing is still being tested. This is by no means set in stone coming in a future patch. This is just Wargaming's latest iteration of testing submarines. Um, this is an interesting game. I, I spent a little bit of time playing submarines. I was actually way more interested in looking at the ASW uh, uh, anti-submarine warfare capabilities of the various destroyers. I've got a video probably working on that later this week. I didn't test every single one, but I did a little bit of a, a sampling. I did Gearing. I did Holland. I did Grozovoy here. Uh, I did Daring. Um, just kind of a bit of a compare and contrast, and uh, I'll probably put a little, a little video about that later. But more more on that later, guys. I've got sub-videos coming off and on all week, so if you didn't get the chance to play the test, stay tuned. I've got more on that coming, probably including some game replays of some sub-gameplay, and probably some more gameplay like this, looking specifically at ASW operations. What's going on this week in World of Warships? Well, let's talk about a couple of things. First off, if you have been paying attention during this 10.4 patch, you've been playing the Battle of the Beasts, you know that every week there has been the ability to earn a drop mission from Twitch. Um, this uh, from specific content creators. This week, I am on that list. I've already done a couple of streams. I did a about a four-hour stream each Thursday and Friday to try and help people get that mission. I've got one more stream planned before that mission that that opportunity expires. That'll be Tuesday night here in the states, here on Twitch, starting around 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you're still looking, you haven't quite finished up that mission yet, you want to drop on by and uh, and give this a shot. Feel free, come on down. Uh, I'll be doing my normal Tuesday night stream. Ordinarily, the last few months, I've been doing Tuesday night as a variety night, but because I'm trying to maximize the number of people getting this mission, um, I'm, I'm putting on basically what amounts to an extra boat stream this week just to make sure everybody has the opportunity to earn that. So drop on by, and we'll do our regular shenanigans. It's patch week here on NA 10.5. We'll be dropping on Wednesday. Um, what does it feature? Well, we've got this new Grand Battle game mode coming with Super Battleships. That's right, we're finally going to see H-42, German Battleship Design H-42, coming to the game in the form of Tier 10 German Battleship Hanover. Um, she is accompanied by what amounts to like a Super Yamato kind of design called Satsuma, which has eight 510 um, millimeter guns. Um, and then the, me the mechanic that they're testing, they're really kind of testing this with, is this idea of uh, increased accuracy over time. If you know much about um, battleship operations uh, from the Second World War, you know that uh, it was very common for battleships over the long haul to use uh, colored colored shells, right? So they could they could they could slowly hone in their uh, their walk you know walk the shells into the target over the course of a long engagement. The the the, the colored dye in the spl and the shells would show up in the splash of the shell if it missed and they could go okay that was our shell it missed you know so many so many meters to the right it was so many meters long let's adjust our aim and fire again that mechanic something similar to it has never existed in world of warships of course and what wargaming is attempting to do is basically set it up so that the longer a battleship is locked onto a target the more accurate it becomes so that's the plan now whether or not they can get there or not, well, we're going to have to see. That's some of what we're testing here, right? So, um, that'll be part of this next patch. It is a special game mode, and I'll be curious to see how you get in there. It looks like, honestly, it looks like a bit of a mess right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, the new team killer rules that were announced back during King of the Sea will be launching with this next patch. That is uh, removing team damage from the game entirely. It is gone, guys, as of Wednesday, or went and Thursday on, in, on EU, I suppose. Gone completely. However, damage inflicted will still continue to reflect back on the player who might have caused it. So let's say you throw some torpedoes downrange, a friendly destroyer stumbles into them. Well, unfortunately, fortunately for them, they won't take any damage. Unfortunately for you, you might, depending on how many torpedoes they eat and how bad that, how bad that damage is. There are still some concerns about the potential to abuse this system uh, from griefing. And I, 
at first I kind of was like, ah, what? I don't get it. But but I, I understand the concern. I, I don't know. I mean, it's coming. We can't change it now. So I think it's going to be really interesting just to see if this becomes a major problem. There's a part of me that thinks it won't. it's not going to be nearly as big as people might be afraid of it being. In the sense of, I strongly suspect most players, most players, will still go out of their way to not intentionally damage their teammates. Even knowing that it won't happen, why, you know, when, let's say you're playing a Shimakaze, your torpedoes take 200 plus seconds to reload. Why do you want to waste them on a friendly when you could be throwing them at the bad guys? <laughs> you know, like the red team. Like, why? I don't understand that. Uh, I mean, if you're just a jerk and you're trying to do it intentionally, that's right, sure. But that still requires you to make, like, radical changes to how you play, play from play from behind everybody there's there are griefing opportunities here i will not pretend that they aren't um we're just gonna have to see how wargaming chooses to handle it and and hope that they make smart decisions if it becomes uh, it becomes a problem because it's coming to the game it's coming to the game can't stop it now um the big attack aircraft change is coming this patch and i'm i'm really curious to try this because i've heard i've heard two different versions what they're doing is um Rocket the rocket planes now, when they enter their attack run, will throw machine gun shells into the water. Um, that the wording of this is, is is where the confusion is, I think, right? It's meant to show you where the rockets will land. Okay. Now that's to me what that tells me is um, you know, essentially my reticle is shrinking, it's shrinking, it's shrinking. So it's showing the player where the reticle is, so he can try to dodge around it or or make good decisions about how to get out of it. Okay, fine. But I've had people tell me that, no, no, the, the, the machine gun splashes in that reticle represent the exact position that every rocket is going to land. And I, I don't know that that's the case. I haven't tested this, but that sounds, I'm, I'm, I'm highly skeptical of that. Like, that doesn't sound, doesn't sound realistic at all. So we'll see. But it is changing, the, the goal being to try and give destroyer players a little more of a heads up and a little, a little, better, a little better option of doing this. The Dutch Tech Tree Branch will be arriving uh, in the next patch, so that will totally be a thing. Uh, those ships are still in testing, um, but you'll, you'll start to see those if you have like a mod that you can look at those in. Um, you know, you can you can see them. You can see the branch in the Tech Tree. Why is this submarine not dead? This submarine's not dead because I dropped my depth charges too early. This was this is a this is a bit of a learning experience, right? Because and and this is something I'll cover in the ASW video. Not everybody launches their depth charges off the stern. Grozovoy here does, and I drop those too early. So now I have to flip around and run this guy down. So a little bit of a little bit of a learning curve there on my on my part. Um, recruitment points are going away if you've taken a part in the recruiting station this past year and a half, two years, whatever it is. Um, those are going away, being replaced by uh, a new system for community tokens. And recruiting new players to the game will not be the only way you can earn these new community tokens. You can earn them by recruiting players, yes, but also by playing on the public test server, um, by watching the official, like watching official Twitch streams. That will totally be a thing. Um, and then there will, they've said there will be other ways, but they haven't gotten any more specific right now. We don't know what those other ways will be just yet. Um, what can you spend them on? At the moment, there are a handful, a variety of unique rewards in the shop. The one I was most excited to see was um, some of the community-created camos. You may remember for a while there, they were running, we were running, we were running community uh, camo contests, right? And uh, you know, like for example, Bliskovica has a camo that was created by the community um, that is available in game or was available in game through a, through like a drop mission at the time, but unfortunately. Uh, that hasn't been available for a while, so uh, oh, that's so satisfying. Um, when uh, so haven't been, able, haven't been able to get this camo for a while, they're putting it into the game. It will be available for community tokens, which I think is really cool. Um, the the suggestion that I've made that I really want them to bring back is I really want them to come back with uh, the the uh, when you buy these big fancy uh, the, the super expensive game packs right uh like the crazy the, the admiral's bundles in the shop many of those come with huge um uh, what's a huge they come with unique flags unique custom unique uh, vanity flags you know Sharnhorst and all this stuff those typically that's the only way those are available and i find that very frustrating i would i would love to have a, co a, a copy of those uh but not have to spend 120 dollars to get one so i've suggested they try to put those in the community token shop, right? I think that'd be a really, really cool, a really nice thing. So we'll see. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know, but here's hoping. Um, yeah, that's about that. That'll be for most of what's coming in 10.5. We'll keep an eye out after that. Um, 
you may remember a while ago that tier, I'm going to get this right, tier 9 European Premium Destroyer, HNLMS Friesland, um, was announced that she was going to be moving to the new Dutch tech tree. Okay, this was this was something that came up when they first announced the Dutch cruisers. Everybody's like, well, what about Friesland? Okay, fair question. Um, so Wargaming initially said that she would simply move to the Dutch tech tree and that'd be the end of it. Okay. Um, the trick is, is that brings its own set of baggage, right? You've got people that like playing that ship as a European ship. You've got people that have spent time specking out a captain for that as a European captain and so on and so forth. And so they've, they've been trying to find a compromise. Initially, they had announced, well, um, you're hosed. Basically, what's going to happen is um, we're going to... the Friesland's going to stay in the European tech tree and we're going to sell a new Dutch ship... Uh, that's what, if you want it. If you want the Dutch ship, you're going to have to pay for it. Well, that was also a, a suboptimal solution, let's say. So, after this was pointed out to them by many, many community members and uh, a variety of angry tweets, um, they kind of relented a bit and were like, all right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you the option. If you own a Friesland, you'll be able to decide. Do you want to keep it in the European tech tree or do you want to transfer it over to this? Because in, in, the new ship that's coming into the into the Dutch tech tree is literally a clone. It's the same ship. It's got a different name. They're going to call it Groningen, um, but it's the same ship. So you basically, if you want, you can transfer your existing Friesland into the Dutch tech tree. You will not transfer the captain, only the ship, um, and go from there. So they're going to give you the choice, kids. Um, but that was a nice that was a nice uh, a nice win for the community, right? Because initially that had that was not something they were going to do. Devlog updates: um, some minor ship balance changes uh, coming soon. Uh, Hayuga is getting uh, tier seven premium Japanese battleship Hayuga, getting a small reload nerf. Tier ten Italian tech tree battleship Cristoforo Colombo is getting a little bit of a buff. They're rebuffing both her, her reload speed and her turret traverse. Um, and then Tier 7 Premium American Cruiser, USS Flint, which was caught up in the train wreck of, of uh, cruiser range changes back uh, with the Commander's skill rework, is going to get a range buff. Um, she is not Atlanta range yet, but I think what you're going to see over the next few patches, they're going to slowly work her back up to where she eventually will be because she's just been largely shunned by the community as a result of, of all of these changes, which feels, which feels kind of bad, right? Which feels kind of bad. Um, what else is going on? Dutch cruisers, of course, are still in testing, still undergoing some tweaks. The big thing they seem to have done is they've made some some notable changes to the, just the airstrike mechanics. Um, they are, by and large, increasing the cooldown ability of the airstrike uh, the airstrike ability on across the board. In the sense of every Dutch cruiser, when we were looking through first look videos, um, and I'll take a moment here and, and apologize for not getting the tier 8, 9, and 10 ones done before the test chips were taken out of our port. I'll do it next patch cycle. So look for those next week. Um, but the cooldown was 60 seconds, right? You could drop, you, you, when you push the button, it took 60 seconds for that airstrike to recharge. They're increasing this number. Um, depending on the tier, it seems like it's going from either to either 80 seconds or 120 seconds. I mean, sorry, 80 seconds or 100 seconds. Um, I think that's reasonable. You, you definitely ended up in a position uh, watching some of the videos that I'd seen, um, the stuff that leaked out, people uh, people watching, you know. Remember, you, you folks, if you see one of these ships played, if played against you in-game, it's totally illegal, right, for, for that video to find its way onto YouTube or Twitter or whatever. So I've seen people video people playing against, uh, for example, Gao Nu, uh, the, the Tier 10, and... You could just spam these airstrikes because you could just, you know, bam, 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 and then they would come back 60 seconds later, and you could bam, 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 and it was like, oh my god, this is insane, right? So they're lengthening the cooldown. Now, to make up for that, they're trying to make those easier to use. At the moment, it appears, from again, from the outside looking in, um, that they're primarily useful against ships in a, in a narrow window, a destroyer in smoke, a carrier who hasn't turned his engines on, uh, a battleship or a heavy cruiser parked up next to an island who's camping out. Okay, fine. Um, but they're trying, basically it sounds like they're going to increase the reticle size. They're going to increase the number of bombs dropped into that reticle. Now that's, this is, this is both good and bad. One is it, 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 increasing the number of bombs sounds terrible. However, if they're increasing the area that they're falling over, that just gives you more opportunity to actually get some use out of them. And I like that ability. Uh, I like that because the, again, based on the videos that I've seen, it almost looks like leading these things is really, really difficult um, at the moment. And I think they're trying to make it a little easier for players to, to, to utilize these things. Um, 
And and the last one is that on tier eight premium Dutch cruiser at the Zeve Provincia, they have uh, just straight up buffed the ability. She used to only have one charge of the airstrike. Now she has multiple. She has three. Um, so it's it's a big change there. Apparently they realized that you know her eight gun light cruiser armament was not going to cut it without having more beef to the airstrike ability. So they're making some changes there. Um, last but not least, they have announced new premium ships that will be coming to testing uh, very soon. I believe as soon as next patch. So I might be able to get some... Actually, no. No, if they announce these, they'll be in the 10.6 patch. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we won't see these for a bit, I don't think. Um, but when they do come, rest assured, we'll get some first look video on them. That is Tier 9 Premium American Battleship Hybrid, USS Kearsage. Tier 8 Premium American Heavy Cruiser, USS Rochester. And Tier 9 French Super Cruiser, Carnot. Now, Kearsage is the one that's caused the most consternation, right? Because she is another of the hybrid ships. Wargaming has been bringing these to the game for a little while now, of course. Issei has been released. The expectation is that uh, Tone is on the way as well. We know tony has been in testing, but I don't believe I've seen a release, uh, an announcement saying that she win that she's final or that she'll be for sale. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But the bottom line is we know Tony's coming eventually. Um, and Wargaming here now kind of expanding upon the, uh, the the hybrid concept, bringing it to the American line by by bringing us Kearsage. Now, Kearsage, as near as I can figure, and, and somebody in the comments is going to have to be smarter than me on this because I don't know all the history. But Kearsage looks like uh, a USS Minnesota, like a Tier 9, because she's got, she's got four, uh, four turrets um, that's got... Basically, they've stripped her superstructure off. They've got this. They've got like a. They got like a flight deck plastered around the middle of the ship. But she's according to the the, the text, she's supposed to have. She's supposed to have um, four turrets. So I'll be curious to see if that's true or not, or if she only has the two on the bow. I don't know. That's a lot of firepower. But apparently, she has rocket planes. She's rocket planes armed with tiny Tims. That's where they're headed here. Um, that means her utility against destroyers is somewhat limited, but does give her some extra teeth against, say, a battleship or a heavy cruiser. Really against a heavy cruiser. The uh, Rochester is an Oregon City-class heavy cruiser. This will be the first time one of those will be coming to the game. I like the look of this ship already. Um, I'll put the announcements down below, but I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I like, I like the American heavy cruisers in general. Um, I'm a big fan. So I'm curious to see... Um, how that goes, uh, just there's a lot to like about this ship, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. And then uh, the French are going to get their first Serpa Cruiser. This is Carnot, which I'll be really interested to have a look at when the time comes. So yeah, guys, that's kind of it for news. This game is winding down. What's really impressive here, um, I didn't even realize that we had won this game at the very at the very end. Um, I, 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 I let the Audacious get away. The mid Our midway died, but with his final bomber squadron, he got both the battleship, the Yamato, and the Audacious that snuck away from me on just a couple of thousand HP, which was super sad. Um, so, yeah, the a little bit of a nice team win there at the end. And uh, I didn't get all the screenshots I wanted, but a 3.4K base game. Now, there's a lot of bots in this game, right? There's five bots in this game, but I was still really proud of this. And I got to kill every single submarine on the enemy team. And that felt really good. <laughs> I'm really enjoying hunting submarines on Test Center. Um, and I'll talk more about that in some of the ASW videos that we talk about later in the week. Anyway, guys, there's our latest scuttlebutt. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.